Fred, I want to I want to talk about your play right now. Yeah. Because going back to the end of last season when you had a couple injuries, um, your your shooting numbers tailed off a little bit. Obviously, you know you were in the conversation for all NBA last year, um, and then to start this year, you've you've dealt with some stuff. You're coming off a back injury where you you were out a couple games. And I, I read an interview where you said, at this point, it's all mental. Like the shooting thing is all mental. Um, from someone who, who dealt with different injuries at time, though, it's very hard as some, you know, you're on the move, you're shooting off the dribble, you're shooting off pin downs, whatever it may be. It's very hard to not compensate when your body's not right. How much have the injuries affected your shooting? Uh, probably a lot. You know what I mean? And I got to be careful with what I say sometimes. And, you know, it's a, it's a lot going on. And um, just being in the business of it, I've learned how to try to, you know, manipulate as best I can. I think that um, early on in the season, it was definitely a uh, adjustment. I think um, from a stylistic point, the way we were playing um, last year was just kind of free and easy. And I think I was much more a focal point with just on ball duties and having the ball the whole game and being able to kind of dictate where I wanted to go. And this year that's changed a little bit. Um, so I'm kind of just like, you know, catching the rhythm. So you know how it goes some nights, the ball finds you some nights it doesn't. And the nights where it doesn't, those are the nights that I'm struggling this year, where it's like the outer rhythm games where I may get a couple catch and shoots, couple contested ones, couple ones off the dribble, I'm not getting to the foul line. And then, you know, I get three wide open ones at the end of the night when we need them. And if I make them, we win. If I miss them, we lose. I've had probably like four or five of those games. So I think it's a big drop off from like where I was as far as an all star caliber point guard to where I am now. But I think it's pretty situational too in terms of where we are as a team and as an organization trying to figure out, you know, what's the best way to maximize the most out of this team. And I got a lot of other responsibilities other than just like scoring the ball. So I'm doing a lot and that shooting has been up and it's been down way more than I would like it to be. So uh, I'm giving myself a little runway, but at the same time, um, just being realistic about where we are. And when I really, really feel like shit, I just go watch the film and say, okay, well, I was two for 12 from three and eight of them were bombs and three of them were heavily contested by a seven footer. And I missed three wide open ones, you know, in my 39th minute of the night. So it's like, you got to be able to be fair with yourself too, but come in and just put the work in too. I, I always, I've used this quote many times on this podcast and I always go back, back to it. Roy, Roy McElroy. I don't, you're a golf fan. Yeah. You know who Roy is. Yeah, yeah. I hope. Um, but he said, when you're playing bad, you feel so far away. And when you're playing good, you always think to yourself, how did I feel like I was so far away? And it's interesting that you you said that yeah. about going back and watching the film and actually dissecting what your shots were. Because I would do that as well. Yeah. As, you know, I didn't have as many responsibilities as you. Basically, I was there to shoot the basketball. Right. And then later on in my career, I was a screener. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, right. Uh, I would go back and I would be like, all right, what's the perspective here? Like, give me something. And mm -hmm. you're, you're right. Sometimes it's end of a shot clock. Sometimes it's an out of rhythm shot. Sometimes it's a ridiculous heat check. Sometimes yeah. it's maybe uh, you, you force, like I, I remember in that Toronto series yeah. against y'all, yeah. Brett never talked anything, to t never, never talked to me about bad shots. He was mm -hmm. like, play free, yeah. take your shots. There was twice in that series where he was like, we can get you a better shot. Don't take that shot. <laughs> right, for sure, because they count. You know what I mean? They count, and like the same aggressiveness that makes you great can hurt you sometimes, especially when you're searching for them. And um, I think that's something that has played a role too, is like the same confidence and swagger that I play with to make any shot at any time over anybody. I think that when it's not going good, you know, the pile up can, can kind of happen fast. So. I mean, listen, the same, I'm the same guy that can give you 30 on any, any given night or 39 on back-to-back -back games against the best or whatever, but there's been way more bad games than I'm accustomed to having for my standard. And a down year for me is 18 and six, you know, in a off the ball role, you know what I'm saying? So. I'm just trying to figure it Fred, out and find my way. You don't need to justify yourself to me, man. Yeah, I no, I'm not justifying. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, like this, this, this is where I'm at. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And uh, last night was one of those nights, so you're getting some of those feelings today as well. Uh, 
But more than anything, because I genuinely really don't give a fuck, is that we're losing. So it's just a whole nother aspect of like, I've pride myself on being a winning player and I won a championship. I won my whole life. I've never been on a bad team. And we're losing on top of me not having my greatest year after having a great year. So it's it's tough right now in January 3rd or whatever it is. You know, last time you were on, we talked a lot about the chip on your shoulder with your just everything from Rockford to Wichita and the not being drafted, everything like that. But, you know, since, even since the last time you were on the show, it's like you made an all-star team. You've had mm-hmm. you've, you've had these NBA champs. You've had, you've had these incredible moments in your career. And I was going to ask you about how you keep the chip on your shoulder after accomplishing all of this. But even listening to you now, it does sound a little bit like the competitiveness and the anger of all of these different things will keep that drive coming. You can make 10 all-star teams yeah. and you'll still have it when you go on a stretch like this. Do you feel like that's just the case in terms of how you sort of are wired? Yeah, I just, I'm just i just never satisfied, you know, because I expect so much from myself and I know what, I, what I'm capable of. And then I'll show you what I'm capable of. And then, you know, it'll be like everything I do has to be 10 times better than the next person just because of where I come from and like my story to get here. You know what I'm saying? So I got to be 10 times better than the next guy. And so it always keeps me going. And I'm also like extremely critical of myself as well. So, you know, I don't really give myself credit for the good games because I expect to do that. And I just have really high expectations. So that keeps me going and um, just keeps me working and everything else will will fall where it is. But uh, that's something that like last year, I remember as soon as I made the All-Star game, I was like, all right, like, I, this is not a fluke, you know what I'm saying? And I already went into that mode right away. And I got hurt for the last half of the season, but that was like a shift right away. We spent a ton of time two two and two years ago and change when you were on the show uh, on your backstory. But that All Star nod, what did that mean? What were the mo- What were the moments like when you first found out? Yeah, I mean, we played. I think we played that night. When they, when they um announced it, so just the anxiety of like knowing that I did enough to be selected, but like tricking myself out of it, like man, they gonna hate on me. I know they not gonna pick me, man. Like this always happens. Like my whole life has been happening. So for that to finally, you know, make the nod and the, to get picked, it was just a big relief and um just a big uh I could just take a breath for a second and just appreciate you know how far I've come, knowing where I came into and knowing where being undrafted slots you in the business or even just the depth chart, just sticking to basketball, where that puts you at. Um, knowing what I was up against to do all of that in six years, you know what I'm saying? I was just proud of myself and the people that supported me along the way. It was a great moment for us. We should mention Fred is the fourth undrafted player in the modern NBA to earn an all-star nod. Ben Wallace has the most of any undrafted player, I believe. Connie Hawkins was also undrafted, but that was uh, a while ago. So there's actually five guys ever to be undrafted and be all-stars. And I, I told this story the first time that Fred was on the show, but I want to tell it again. I think it was my first year in Philly, Fred's second year in the league. And I came up to you at the scorers table. Um, and I was like, dude, I was like, I know this sounds weird, but you're one of my favorite players yeah. in the league. <laughs> And you're like, oh, thanks, man. And, yeah. and uh, you know, f- for all the reasons you're describing, regardless of how you play, uh, you know, in terms of shooting or passing or guarding, it's like I I, I saw that you had this, like, chip and, yeah. and you played hard and you were yeah. about the right things. And, and if Tommy, if you had told me six le- years later that we'd be sitting here and we, he would have an all-star nod and he'd be wearing his own merch, I would have told you you were crazy. <laughs> so he has a ring? He has a ring? Yeah. He's an all-star? Nah, listen, man. Shit, shit, God is good, man. That's all I can say. I, I appreciated that, though, at the time, too. Like, And I try to do a little bit more of that as I get more years in. But it was just funny because I'm just, JJ is such a dick, bro. Like, <laughs> He's just such a dick to play against. and like just This fucking, is what we keep trying to fucking, emphasize on the show, is fucking, that he's a dick. Oh, man, he's a fucking menace out there, bro. The elbows and dirty and shit. He just he's just a feisty. Right. So for him to say that, like at the it, when it was crazy because I had to guard him. So we probably I probably was matching his minutes at the time. Like I remember they're like, you gotta guard JJ. I'm like, all right, fuck. So he's like, Hey, he's one of my favorite players. And I'm like, is he trying to keep me? He's, he's trying to butter me up. <laughs> and then I went back out there. He's like, boom, like elbow <laughs> to the chest. He run off a pin down. Like, all right, I got him. I got him. 
I meant it sincerely. Didn't mean I didn't want to yeah, kick yeah. your ass. Yeah, yeah, night. yeah. You know, I appreciate it, man. That's the best. That's the best. How how do you sort of explain the the struggles you guys have right now? I mean, <clears throat> Tommy and I during uh, last season spoke about our love for you guys multiple times. Uh, the playoff series with the 76ers was very competitive yeah. in the first round last year. And I think the expectation, uh, we, you know, we talked about it preseason, like the expectation would you, you guys at this point in the season would be in the mix. You'd be a top six team in the East. Um, and some of it is the depth of the league and whatnot, but yeah. just the, the struggles, it seems like the team is off from yeah. an outsider's perspective. Yeah, I just think we haven't been able to find much consistency. And, um, you know, that comes from a lot of different places, whether it's injuries or whatever the case may be. But we just haven't been able to be consistently good. And, and we have flashes and maybe it's 32 minutes out of a 48 minute game. But like like you said, the rest of the league is continuing to get better and it's more spread out. And there's, you know, 10 other good teams in the East and, you know, 10 other good teams in the West. And um, we just haven't been able to put it together. So we just got to keep growing and, you know, find ways to like reinvent ourselves. I think we're still trying to find a, a new identity. And we had one last year, which was, you know, play hard and cause havoc and all of those things. But it just hasn't been that for us this year. Um, also being patient because we really got hot towards the end as well. So like a lot of what we do is is rhythm and flow and just cohesiveness that we haven't had. And I think that when it's clicking, it's really good and it's hard to play against. And um, when it's not, our margin for error is really small. So um, we're playing, you know, five guys, you know, heavy minutes. So you know, it's up and down and just got to adjust to our play style. Um, last year was a little more evenly distributed. This year, Pascal's taking more of like a offensive engine role where he's having astronomical numbers um and we're finding trying to find ways to be successful in that but our defense has just been shit so far and um we got to find ways to to be better with that as always thank you for listening to the show please subscribe on youtube spotify apple wondery wherever you listen to your podcast uh we appreciate you guys 